another episode of Groovy Tuesday. My name's Paul Church from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. I shall waffle for a little bit until I see that we've got some people tuning in. I hope everybody's well, wherever you are in the world. Um, beauty of um, social media is that we're worldwide. It doesn't matter what time of the day it is, or evening, or morning, um, everybody's welcome. And if you miss any of the episodes, then you can just go back and watch anytime you're around. So good morning, everybody. Welcome. Um, a little bit early to the party today. I can see we've got some people tuning in. Um, Stuart is in the room with you today, so I'm just waiting for the all clear to make sure you can hear me. Um, there we go. And Stuart said the sound is good. Thank you, Stuart. Good morning, Susan. Lovely Jane Telford. Mo, Sharon. Good morning, good morning. Um, yeah, it's um, a little bit fresh this morning down in um, Kent. Um, yesterday was a really weird day weather-wise. We um, started off really rainy and windy, um, then it dried up and then the sun was out. Really, really strange weather, considering we're what? The 25th of October. <laughs> um, is it? this weekend that the clocks change or is it next weekend i can't remember i have to have a look there we go i can see all the lovely friendly faces popping in jill josie jillian karen sunny crawley yep we're not far from there um karen and the sun is here in um edenbridge as well so um lovely pat hosking good old morning from sunny cornwall but it looks as if, there we go. So the clocks change this weekend. So let me think, they spring back and fall forward. So we lose an hour this weekend, don't we? Oh, it's only an hour. The nights, I mean, the nights are, are drawing in already, aren't they? I mean, it's quite, what was it, about half six, quarter seven last night? It was sort of quite dark. Um, so yeah, the winter is coming in. Good morning from the Netherlands. Good morning, Karin. Um, oh, it's lovely to have all your company again. Um, we had a week's break last week. We had our amazing partner retreat in the spa hotel in Tunbridge Wells, um, headed up by the lovely um, Linda Williams and Josie Davidson, um, assisted by the lovely Lynn Jackson, myself and Barbara, and um, some fantastic projects um that was showcased over the four days and um it was lovely there we go there's dawn yeah dawn dawn left her jacket behind so that's winging its way to dawn um she should get that today um so yeah it was lovely to um meet so many friendly faces some new friends um really really enjoyed it, it it's nice just to get together and sort of chat and catch up. There's some people that I hadn't seen in a couple of years. Um, so that was lovely. Um, yeah, it was, you know, I've got a bit of a, a froggy, froggy throat and a runny nose, but I think that's just the weather. And here I am, look, sitting here in a short sleeve shirt. <laughs> and the only reason I'm in a short sleeve shirt is because I haven't ironed any long sleeve shirts. Um, because I wore them all at the retreat last week. So, there we go. Jill's having shrinkage issues. <laughs> Every time she makes a comment, her screen shrinks. So, I'm sure a quick reboot will sort that out. So, what's everyone been up to the past week? Keeping out of trouble, getting in the groove. Um, hope you joined Barb yesterday in the Shack Shack. Um, it, it's nice to have these hours um, just to sort of switch off from everything that's going on in the world, especially here in the UK at the moment, um, and just get in the groove or get in the shack. Um, yeah, it, it's, um, it's nice. It's the, the chill time. And um, and we've been working on a couple of plates by, from Linda Williams. Let's have a look. Let's turn them around the right way so we can have a look. Just have a bit of a, a recap. 
So we've been looking at the Christmas tree and Linda's lovely stocking. Um, and the past couple of weeks, I mean, we're on our fourth week this week and we're on the Christmas tree. And this is where we're headed with the Christmas tree. This is a piece created by Linda herself. And um, it's using green parchment and it's various different layers. So we've been breaking it down and um, doing some white work. And I thought today we'd finish off the white work and then we'd start some cutting. Now, when you look at these designs from Linda, I know I often say it, they're sort of, when I say simplistic in design, what I mean by that is that if you're not into your pico cutting, then these designs or these shapes are easy to cut out with a normal pair of scissors. And we're gonna do a combination, if we choose to, of some pico cutting and then finishing off with normal scissors, okay? But if you're not on that far on your bus journey, then you can just cut all of it out with a pair of scissors. And we have the complementary car shaped car blanks that work with them as well. So we've got the, the Christmas tree and the stockings. And I'm sure Stuart will pop the, the link up to those products um, shortly. Because these car blanks, I mean, these are a Mr. Dave um, work of art with um, the big old platen presses. And um, these are not obviously just for parchment, but these are great for stamping on, decorating. Um, so that they're a standalone product, but they're also a fantastic product that enhances the groovy plate. You see? Just like so. And they stand up fantastically. Okay, look. Just like so. But if you're feeling a little bit frugal, then you could always cut cut it in half, and then you've got two for one. And it's the same for the stocking. Isn't it? Just like so. So I thought we'd we'd carry on with our white work today, as I said. Um, and then what we can do is we can start to, ooh, bit of focus. We can start to then sort of assemble, we'll see how the time goes because, you know, when it's like a groovy, you get carried away um, and time just flies. And um, I've got a sneaky peek of the new and exclusive, which is launching on Thursday with Barb at 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. And, um, so it's set number four of Linda's Christmas Treasures. And um, so I've got the plates to show you and I've got a couple of samples to tease you with. Because um, I'm naughty like that. I got told off so many times at the retreat last week <laughs> that it was all my fault um, that some of our uh, um, friends took up Groovy. But you know what? I don't mind getting for blamed for things like that because obviously you enjoy it. And if you enjoy it, then job done. So um, yeah, but there you go. So what we've been working on so far is we've been working on green parchment and we've traced out all the different layers and we've slowly been building up the white work on the various different layers. Now this one here, which is super white, this is where I took the color out of the back of the parchment with an eraser pencil. So, um, so for what we do, we just carry on, we'll do one more layer, because you can see, look, much whiter than these. And, um, and then we'd have a look at some perforating, because what we want to end up with, let me just bring this in, Woo. Are all the different pieces? Let me turn this around. All the little pieces to assemble our tree. Now, if you don't want to do the multi layering, you can just do it all in one layer. But when you look at the, the effect that you get, let me bring a, a white piece of card in underneath because that will really show off the, the green, different shades of green. So you can see there, that's the, the base layer. I mean, that looks lovely just on a, 
that's a piece of seven by seven stencil card. And then that goes on top and it gets darker. I mean, you could do a multi-layer, different colors. You could have a rainbow tree. Oh, this would look lovely in our rainbow parchment. Yeah. And all of these layers have been taken out of one A4 sheet of parchment. Here we just build it up and pop it all on top, layer by layer. And then you get that beautiful graduation of color. But what it also shows is that you can have trees of different sizes. So if you want to make a smaller card, have a smaller tree. If you want a little diddy diddy one, I think that would work lovely on a five by five or a six by six card blank. So you don't have to use the whole of the tree. You can just use, say, sections. You can decide how big or small you want your tree to be. Okay. So let's pop all these bits to, to one side. So for today's session, what we're going to need is our piece of artwork that we're going to be working on. I'm going to use the back of my A4 black mat with a bit of a poly bag that I've, I managed to find. I couldn't find it earlier because it's see-through. And then I'm also going to go with the number six, number 4.5, and then the groovy one, two, three, and four wooden tools. Um, the easy way of, easy way, ooh, get your words right. What I found best was that we've been looking at over the past week is we do the biggest tree, then we move on to the next one, then we move on to the next one down. So that we know that we always start on the largest tree. So by the time we go all the way to the end, in theory, it's rested enough to start again. Okay. Now this has been left for, it didn't do nothing last week. So it's been left for nearly two weeks. So that means that now when we go in again, the white will become whiter because it's had a nice long rest um, since then. Now I know from Facebook uh, for Groovy Worldwide that a number of you have already finished and some of you that were at the retreat last week, um, the lovely Anne Aiken, she said that she was enjoying um, the Christmas tree and when was we going to start on the stocking and... Um, there's plenty of time, there's no rush. Um, but but yeah, it's um, it's one, because we only have an hour, I mean, I only have an hour with you each week, then it, it's that work in progress, isn't it? And um, some people choose to, to carry on afterwards and complete their piece of artwork, and some like to put it to one side and then come back the following week. So it's all about having choices. I can definitely hear my voice. I wonder whether it's going to last the hour. <laughs> Plenty of coffee. Nearly gone. Right, okay. Are we good to go? I think we're, we're ready to get in that groove and let's add some white work. Okay. So we're going to start with the largest tree first. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. So we can see it in a bit more detail. Oh, which way am I going to go? Okay, I'm going to zoom in nice and slowly. Oh, it's not its birthday today. Happy birthday. And you've decided to join us all in on Groovy Tuesday. Oh, where's the cake? I need some cake. <laughs> Chocolate, Victoria sponge, lemon drizzle, I don't mind. Any cake at all, I really don't mind whatsoever. So, um, right, I think we're, we're good to go. So I'm gonna use my groovy guard to focus my area. And I'm gonna go in with my number four tool from the starter kit. And what we're going to do, we're going to do, I'm going to do the garlands first and work all the way along. And then I'll come back 
and do the bows. Oh, there we go. Sue's put some cake up. Well done, Sue. <laughs> Karen, stop. can you please send a link for Facebook as I can't see the chat on YouTube? Yep. Um, Stuart, I'm not sure whether you can put a link into um, YouTube. Um, but Karen, if you go on to um, Clarity Stamp Facebook page, you should be able to see the, the video there. Okay. Right, okay. So up and down, left and right, round and round. Up and down, left and right, round and round. This is like the, the circle chant, as I call it. So up and down, left and right, round and round. And who can remember why we go up and down, left and right, round and round? I'm sure you can. Answers on a postcard. I mean, the way Tina described, did you see Tina's shows on Saturday with her beautiful centerpieces? Um, she goes up and down, backwards and forwards. Up and down, backwards and forwards. See, I can't get that in my head. <laughs> up and down, left and right, round and round. Up and down, left and right, round and round. Shall we have a look, see what difference? Oh, yeah. You can definitely see the difference from here. Well, I can. There we go. Look, so we've done, I've done that row. And now we're coming over to do this part. So there's definitely a lot brighter. Or is it just my eyesight? Maybe it's just my eyesight. Up and down, left and right, round and round. So hands up. Who's finished their Christmas tree? Anyone finished? I think Glynis said that she'd finished her one. Well done, Jane. So you don't get a black hole. Um, so we don't get a black eyed pea. Well done, Chrissy. Left and right. So, and when you look at the, the plate that Linda's designed, there's so many different elements on them. Okay, now I missed the middle of the bow on that one, so we just go back and do that. And the one on that one there. Okay, so now we're going to start to brighten up the towels of the bow. <laughs> Ken said, Paul is like our personal trainer, up and down, left and right, round and round. Yeah, but this is less energetic, Ken. There's no way I'd be doing that um, in a gym or anywhere else. So I'm going to flick from the bottom and just gently move the ball tool along. Let me, should we have a look to see the difference? I mean, I can see some difference there. So it's this one here. Yeah, look at that. Much whiter. See the difference? And now we're going to go into this one. Okay. Groovy guard for me definitely makes a difference. And <laughs> I think you only need one groovy guard, but I know many of you, and from experience, you have several because the little groovy gremlins, they hide them, don't they? So you can never have too many groovy guards. And they're not just for, for parchment. These are great for when you're colouring in as well. Um, it's just a fantastic piece of... I'd say not artwork, is it? It's, it's a product. So let's come over and do the bottom of this one. Okay. 
this is definitely making a difference by letting it rest. Should we have a look at the bottom of our bows? Yes. So like if I bring difference between those. This one's had more layers than this one anyway. Um, but yeah. Right, so let's do the, the tops of our bows. So as usual, I'm going to start and I'm, I've turned my artwork so it's comfortable. And we're just going to do all of these ones first. Isn't there meant to be uh, a partial eclipse today as well? Or, or am I making that up? I'm sure I saw something on the, the weather last night. The weather news person was talking about it. Have, have we missed it? Or is it? I thought it was meant to be a partial eclipse. Well, let's have a look at our bows. Oh, I've missed it. It was at 10 o'clock, just as we were tuning in to Groovy Tuesday. Okay, so that you can see the side that I've done compared to the side that I haven't done. How are we getting on? If you're not sure about your white work on your bows, then just trace your bows out onto a, a scrap of parchment um, and practice on that first. Okay. So now we're going to go this way. And I can definitely feel the difference with the parchment by letting it rest. seems to have more bounce to it. See, these trad parches, they know what they're talking about, don't they? Okay, so I'm getting mixed messages then on, somebody said it was at 10 o'clock, someone's saying it's at 4.22. Um, hmm. Strange. Maybe it depends where you are in the country and the world, I don't know. Stuart, maybe you can have a look on the internet um, and let us know. Give us a summary. <laughs> Ken says, a partial clip to the sun, no wonder Facebook wasn't working properly. Right, okay, now I need to come down and do my little bow down here. And what I'm doing, I'm, I'm turning into the bow, if that sort of makes sense. So rather than keep going in a, in a straight line, I'm actually, when I get around here, I'm sort of curving round. Okay, and then we just put some in the towel. Okay, so what is okay? So Stuart says it's from approximately 10 a.m. to 11:50 a.m. There we go. Stuart's put a link in for you. There we go. And I'm gonna turn it. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, you can see the difference now. And then we're going to do this bit. Yeah, so um, maybe I will get to see it then. I mean, I've got no chance of seeing it in here because there's no windows. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea, Pat. Pat says she uses one of her groovy guards to store all her groovy tabs. Good idea. Let's 
Yeah, so Thursday is um, Christmas Treasures number four from Linda Williams. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm rubbish at accents. Um, so I've still got that. So we've got that coming up at four o'clock and um, 8 p.m. on Thursday. And then um, the new and exclusive continues on Friday morning at 8 a.m. And then Barb's on straight after at 9 a.m. And then again at 1 p.m. So... So we've got that coming up this week. We still have to, um, I saw the question just pop up. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, we need to pick a new date for um, Christmas Treasures number three. Um, so we'll have a chat about that later and we'll mention that on TV on Thursday. Okay, so we've moved. That's the first one. So now I'm going to come over and start on the second layer. So I'm gonna stick with the number two. So yeah, so we have to, due to um, technical issues, we had to cut short the craft along for Christmas treasures free. Um, and obviously we went straight into the parchment retreat. Um, so um, so we're just sort of drawing breath, so to speak, and then we'll, we'll find a date that's suitable. Um, to finish off part three, and then there'll be number four. Can't believe um, how quickly the, the new and exclusive has gone, considering we're, we're about to launch set number four. Um, and it's one a month. And I'm not sure whether I have a favourite set or not yet. Um, I think they all have their own individuality. And the set that we're about to launch, there's some beautiful artwork in there that you can use throughout the year, not just for Christmas. So um, I'll give you a sneaky peek in a minute. Just want to get some more layers on this one. Here's me thinking that we're going to get Pico cutting done today. I don't know. Call yourself a parcher, Mr. Church. You can't even work out how long it's going to take but you know what it's all about the process isn't it it's not a race it's not a race indeed if it takes a week longer than we planned it takes a week longer doesn't it so again i'm keep i'm keeping this in the right place so that um If I turn the parchment, then I know by keeping the groovy guard in the right place, it's in the right place on the screen. Does that make sense? Okay. A little bit faster now. Okay. So that's, that's that one. <coughs> so let's have a look. Yes. Definitely takes you, and it may you may think, oh, it looks a little bit ropey. But once we start to to layer it up, um, it'll be fine. It'll be fine, he says. Okay, so then we're going to go to the next one. It will be fine. And we're using green parchment because trees are green normally, Christmas trees. But you could do this in any colour you choose to. You could do it in the clear parchment and add colour behind it. 
or you could do it in some of the lovely designer parchment. Or you can do it in the solid colours. Or you could do it in the rainbow parchment. So many choices. I mean, I've gone for the, I mean, I'm using the, um, the green from the Christmas parchment collection. Um, but if you're looking for another lovely green, um, the bottle green with the cranberry crush is really nice. Um, that's got a nice, lovely, rich, deep green. This one is sort of like a, a fresher green. Or we've got the two-tone light and dark green parchment, if you want to go green. It's all about having choices. I mean, I think this has looked lovely in black as well. Okay, what colours are people doing their Christmas trees? Let's see which is the most popular colour. So are we going clear? Are we going green? Are we going red? Are we going black? Come on, let's share what colours we're doing. I reckon Jane's doing a pink one. Definitely. So Chrissy's going green. Helen's doing dark green. Just slowly building it up. But I can definitely feel the difference by letting it rest for over a week. Jane's doing secret stuff. Pat's doing green. See, we've nearly done this, haven't we? I reckon we'll definitely get to some pico cutting on this. All of a sudden, we're speeding ahead. Oh, I'm speeding ahead. Okay, that's that one. Then we're going to come on. And since I'm in this direction, I'm going to do the bows first. This one's only got two bows on it. Yeah, let's do the, since we're here, let's do the, the beading. And I'm on the black mat, and underneath I've got a piece of cello bag. You know the, the bags that your plates come in? It acts as a real sort of good resist. We're going to move back up. But white work definitely requires patience. And it's definitely a good way to slow down. And just get in. I mean, we're not in the groove at the moment, but we've been in the groove. I'm going to turn that round now. Mm. See the other side of the bow. Oh, did I do? I don't think I did. That way in the middle. Oh, I can do that now. Yes, yeah, so Tina was on TV with her. Um, Christmas centerpieces on Saturday and um, it was great she was working with Janice and Adam um, so much talent 
so much talent. Tina dies. No, Janice and Adam were good as well. Um, but they were so much fun to watch. And even though I've been doing Parchment for many, many years now, um, since Groover came along, I still learn. I mean, I learned so much at the Parchment Retreat last week from Josie and from Linda and from Lynn. Um because it was just all the, the tips and tricks and different ways of, of doing some of the techniques that um, sometimes you forget about. Okay, so let's have a look now. There we go, definitely coming on. Needs a little bit of touch up down there. Let me just go back in and, what's that one there, wasn't it? Okay, and then we're just going to do the final two, and then it's sneaky peek time. So, up and down, left to right, round and round. Up and down, left to right, round and round. This is the only exercise that I'll be doing, Mr. Ken. Uh, <laughs> Did loads of steps last week at the parchment retreat. I think I was averaging on 12,000 steps a day. So that kept me going. And the staff at the, the spa hotel, um, they are so helpful and so, they're just brilliant. I mean, I've stayed in hotels before, but they just couldn't do enough for you. Nothing was ever too much trouble. And um, one of the um, the managers, um, she knows that I like to get in early um, just to make sure everything's all okay. And she, um, she had a jug of coffee waiting for me. She remembered... Um, and she had a jug of coffee waiting for me when I used to arrive in the morning. So that was nice. See, it's the little things like that. The amount of people they must see um, every day, every year. And she remembered. Okay. Whoops. There we go. So... Let's zoom out a little bit now. Okay. Whoops. Which way am I going? Out. I'm going that way. There we go. Bring that in. So I reckon that's enough white work for the moment. So oh. Have a stretch. It was quite funny because um, every now and again at the um, retreats, because everyone was so engrossed in what they were doing, Bob said, "Right, everyone, stop! Everyone, look up!" So everyone looked to the front. She went, "No, look up! Look up! Look up!" And stretch your neck, left and right, up and down, because we get so engrossed. And then she had us stretching our arms out. So we were, it was a bit of sort of like um, parching yoga. Really? <laughs> oh. So, um, yeah, it, it was so much fun. It really, really was. Um, yeah, looking forward to next year already. Okay, should we have a, a sneaky peek of the new and exclusive? Are you ready? I've got a few pieces of artwork, and then we've just... Uh, how am I going to do this? I think I've done enough TV to know. Right, okay. Ready? Ta -da! There you go. Yeah. Okay, so it's a series of five plates. Um, this series is called The Holly and the Ivy. Um, and this is a piece that Jazz and Barb came up with. So each of um, the different sets has a nested carol verse. Okay. So this is the, the holly and the ivy. And here's a piece of artwork 
from Glynis using that plate. Glynis had a little bit of grid work in the background, but you can see she's taken the plate in its entirety and then just added some extra bits behind it. So that's the lovely frame. Want me to zoom out a little bit more? Sure, Brandy. Okay. Let me have a look. Which way am I going? There we go. Is that better? Okay. Right. Okay. Right. So that's the, the nested verse frame. Let's pop that one forward. Then, I love this one, the mistletoe frame. And here's a piece of artwork from Francis. Now, this is exquisite. What Francis has done, oh, she's pico cut the inside of the frame. Let me bring it up to show you. Look at that. And then she's perforated. So what she's done, she's just taken the middle section and then she's just used the vines without the mistletoe and then perforated in that frame. Clever. Really, really clever. I mean, all our design team are absolutely, they're just out of this world. They're, they're fantastic for what they come up with. Now, the next one is from lovely Sheila. Look at that. And this is using um, rainbow parchment. Rainbow parchment in the background. So Sheila's done this in layers. So she's done this section here as a layer. And then she's put a different layer in the background. But this could be a topiary for any time of the year. Okay. Lovely Sheila. And look, you'll notice now that all of our um, companion paper, look, the companion paper even works well with the rainbow parchment. Let's what, see if, what color did Sheila use. So Sheila used Paradise Island parchment and paper and the Northern Lights companion paper. Look at that. So this layer here, the one on top of the white card, is the Northern Lights companion paper. And then Paradise Island, parchment, and then paper behind to intensify the color. Okay. So then we go to the next one. Now this one's by Jane Telford. And Jane has combined several of the plates together. So Jane's taken the poinsettia, season's greetings just for you. And what she's done, she's done the frame from the verse and pop that behind there. And this will be one of the demos that I'll be replicating <laughs> once I read Jane's instructions um, at 8 a.m. on Friday morning. Yeah just getting the sequence and Jane's done it all for me. I've just got to read it and then translate it. And then the lovely companion paper in the background. And then the final one in the collection. Look at that. So you've got a lovely frame. You'll notice that they've all got beautiful frames. I mean, all of the, the Christmas treasures and this is um, another piece from Francis. And Francis has combined it with some multi-needle tool work. And um, yeah, she's used, there's a lot of extra work that's gone into that, I can tell you. I can tell you, as Barb would say. Um, you look at the, the artwork and you look, and then you look again, and you see so many different elements. Um, I mean, Francis has enhanced the red part here um, with some embossed dots and some lines. 
she's infilled the, the frame here using the basic grid. And it's on layers. Um, I don't want to. So, where Francis had, I say Pico cut. We covered this in one of Linda's books. Can't remember which one it was. I'm guessing it's um, the Pergamano number one multi needle toolbar. But I remember doing this in the Pergamano school. So, the tree is one layer, then the clear parchment is a second layer, and then behind we've got a layer of the rainbow parchment, which has the, the greeting on. Can you see the greeting? Let me see if I can... There we go. Warm wishes this Christmas. Um, and then you've got the paper behind. So it's all about the layers on this one. So, um, so there you have it. Some beautiful artwork from a fantastic design team. Um, it always blows me away. And I know um, any of the ladies that design the plates, Tina, Linda, Josie, Barb, um, Jazz in the office, when they design them and then they see what the design team do with them um, because I'm sure when the designers come up with the ideas they've already got an idea in the head on what it should look like um, and then you give it to somebody else and they either take it as it comes and give you back what you thought it was or they come up with something completely different they really do so um so yeah, so looking forward to those shows um, on Thursday, 4 p.m., 8 p.m., and then Friday at 8 a.m. Um, and they are exclusive to the TV um, until 9 a.m. on Saturday morning when they'll be available on our website. So um, choices, choices. All right, coffee's gone cold. Ooh, sorry, that coffee was really cold. <laughs> Okay, should we do a little bit of perforating? Right, so for perforating, I'm gonna put my soft black mat to one side. I'm gonna bring in my 12 by 12 super foam. Now we've got the super foam in white, we've got it in black in A4, but for me personally, I prefer the 12 by 12. And the reason being is it gives me a larger area to work. So I, I've got more resting space for my arms, if you know what I mean, in my hand. I mean, if this was the, the A4, there's still enough room, but it's all about having choices. And we do the, the 12 by 12 in the black, and we also do it in the white. So if you're using the light panel, then the light will shine through on the white. Okay. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna concentrate on the largest tree first. And I will zoom in a little bit closer. So we need our super foam. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my tumble dry sheet. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my tumble dry sheet down first. Then we're working from the front of our parchment. So I've turned it over now, so this is the front. And obviously I can tell it's the front because we've got the white line art. If you've got green line art, then you're on the wrong side. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that over. Definitely gonna take my groovy guard. And we also need our two needle bold. Now the two needle bold, when you look at the end, let's see if I can get this, there we go you can see it, it's like two little eyes looking at you. Now, if, and it goes where this is sort of beveled down. It goes, let me get the two needle fine just to show you the difference in case you're not sure which one you may have. You can do it with the two needle fine by all means. Um, but if you're new to uh, perforating, then, a bigger hole definitely makes it easier. 
Okay. So two needle bold and a two needle fine. So the two needle fine goes from top to bottom, if that sort of makes sense. And then the bold goes from left to right. And when I say it goes from left to right, what I mean, when you look at the tool, the bevel is going away from you. Okay. So that will help um, to work out which... I hold that up. Can you see that? Let me come in on this camera. You might see it better. There we go. So this one, okay, and then this one is a fine. So I'm going to go with the bold. I'm now going to zoom in closely. So for those of you that are new to, we need to perforating. There we go. Whee! Nearly fell off the chair then. <laughs> that would have been fun. You would have heard a crash bang wallop. All right. Okay, so let's come over to an area where we can see. Because we're only going to concentrate on the bottom part of the tree. So we're going to perforate around this area here. And we're going to stop at that point. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to hold the tool upright and I'm going to turn it so it's comfortable to me so I can see. And what we're going to do is we're perforating outside. I wonder if I come in on this one. Let's see if I can get this at a better angle for you. So, I wonder, is it better that way? There we go. So I've just caught that white line. And then what you do is you put the, so you've made two holes to start with. I'm going to zoom in even closer. Okay. Whee. Really coming close now um, in. Let's hope it doesn't go out of focus. Whee. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay, so when I bring my hand in, it could go a bit fuzzy, so we'll, we'll have to adjust. So we've got two holes there, and what you're going to do is you're going to go into the hole nearest. You really can't see this. Let me come in on this one. Okay. That's better. What, right, what I'm going to do, let me run round, run round. I don't run anywhere. I'm going to run round and bring this camera in closer. I have to get up and do this one because I can't reach it from there. Let me see if I can come in closer on that one. Wait, a bit more. Sorry, sorry, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I can't reach that one from. Woo, that's really close. Okay. So we've got our two perforations there. So you're going to take the back needle and pop it into the, the hole. And then. Perfect. So what you're doing is you're increasing one hole at a time and you'll find that you'll get into a rhythm and typically me I've left my glasses in my office don't you know what I don't know if it's easy if I look at the camera and do it or whether I look at the parchment and do it so what we're doing is we're just perforating around the outside. And I'm just turning it slightly now. Let's see, what way we're going to go? Can we go 
can we see that okay? Yeah, I think so. And I'm just, see how I'm just gently swiveling the tool to go round the outside. I wonder whether Barb's got a pair of her glasses here. <laughs> Hang on, let me have a look at Barb's sash. I bet she took all like now she's got her new fancy glasses. I bet she's took all her readers with her. Yeah. Oh well. I'll persevere for the next 10 minutes. I don't know. Yeah. It'll be fine. So now I'm gonna turn the parchment to help me. Ooh. Hang on, that way. In the right place. Yeah, there we go. So we're just increasing. And the reason we do this with the, the two needle tool is because if we tried to do it with a one needle freestyle, you wouldn't get the perfect pitch between each of the perforations. Okay. And in order to get a really nice pico, you have to get that perfect pitch between the two. Okay. I'm getting into the rhythm now. And obviously at home, hopefully you won't be, well, maybe you are talking to someone while you're doing it. I can just, Josie would be like, bzz, 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 bzz. She'd be flying around the outside of this. But there's no rush. We just take our time. See, I quite like perforations without any pico cutting. And that's why some of Josie's um, grids that combine um, like the duet grids with the perforating and the embossing um, you don't have to pico cut if you don't want to. I'm just going to turn it round. I'll go over this way. So we're going in a straight line now. Well, straightish. And because we're using the two needle bolt, it makes the holes, well, easier when we're pico cutting because we have a, a bigger hole for the tips of the scissors going to. And especially if you don't have your glasses. I think if I was using the two needle fine, I don't think I'd stand a, a chance of getting a decent run on this. Okay, so I'm turning my work again. So we're now around the, the base of the Christmas tree. There we go. So what else have I got to tell you? So yeah, so we've spoken about the new and exclusive on Crate and Craft on Thursday and Friday. Then Barb will be on at 9 a.m. and 1 a.m. with some fantastic KISS stamps designed by Tina Cox. Oh, I've gone a bit wide on that one. That'll be fine. Concentrate. <laughs> um, we have the Clarity Matters blog on Saturday, Grace does the Saturday share where she chooses some of your artwork from Clarity Worldwide and Groovy Worldwide and shares for everyone to see. And then on Sunday, we have a step-by-step -step tutorial by one of the fantastic design team. Can't remember what it is this week. Last week was Tina. Um, with her 
smaller Christmas corners. Ruby plates. I'm sure that's what she used. Um, and then on Monday, it's back to the shack shack with Bob. Wait, where are we going? Sorry, 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 sorry. Because I'm in so close, it's hard just to re remember where I'm going. So we're just going to perforate around the bottom part of the tree. Okay. It doesn't take too long. I mean, this is the biggest one, so this is going to take the longest time, if you can call it long, to perforate around. So I'm now swapped over to the, the overhead camera. Okay, so there we go. Let me zoom out. Ooh, head rush. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So you can see now we've only perforated the bottom tier of the tree because that's the only part we need to um, pico cut. Okay. And we repeat that process on all of the lower parts of the other size of trees. So I'm going to do a little bit of pico cutting just on this one, just to, to get going. Okay, so for those of you that want to give it a go. So when we're pico cutting, we're pico cutting, really, sorry, over the waste area. Okay, so this part here is all the part that's going to fall away. And we've got three different types of weapons of choice. We've got the exclusive, we've got the perga cutters, and we've got the ring lock. And Tina did a really good demo with these on um, Saturday during the 5pm show. Um, but I'm just going to touch on it briefly. Next week we'll go into a little bit more detail on the Pico cutting and the different scissors. But I know time is fast running out. Well, it has run out, technically. But you know what? We're still going to go. If I can see where the holes are, because I haven't got my glasses. So I'm holding my scissors in the spoon position. And I've come in with my finger and thumb. I'd say next week we will go into more detail on different ways of holding the scissors, different ways of positioning them. But I just wanted to do a little bit of pico cutting. So we're just putting the tips in. And you're just advancing one at a time, okay? And it's really therapeutic when you hear that snip. I just wanted to do a little bit just to show you what it looks like, done that one. Note to self, remember glasses. The only reason I haven't got them with me today, they're on, in my office, is because I was starting to put stuff together to take to the TV and then forgot about, not forgot about Groovy TV, but so what we're going to do now, I'm going to just snip this away and then I'm just going to cut. I shouldn't do it with these scissors, but just for speed. And it's actually it's got a nice curve on it. Okay, so we've now got hey. see, can you see that? Um there we go. Happy with that. Happy with that. Okay. Whew, that hour has just flown by. So thank you once again for joining me. I really enjoyed your company. Um, I hope you have too. Next week, we're going to continue perforating, okay? Go into a little bit more in depth on the Pico cutting, if you want to give it a go. 
and we'll have we'll cut everything out and we'll assemble the tree that's the plan okay so we're going to perforate pico and assemble and then the following week we'll move on to the stocking okay so um so if you haven't got the tree or the stocking then it's available on our website we've got a special offer of for both of them together um don't forget you've got the car blanks to go with them as well if you're interested in that and um i will see you on tuesday i'll be in the shack with barb on monday and um we'll see you up at the tv on thursday at 4 p.m so i hope you can join us enjoy the rest of the week maybe go and have a look at the eclipse if it's not all already over um and um, stay safe and we'll see you next week take care now bye bye thanks Stuart.